Turn over to Matthew chapter 13. I believe according to Galatians 6 and 6, and then you read that. Don't just hear me say Galatians 6 and 6. Go read it. Uh, it says that... Um, that if that 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 if you are instructed in the word, then you must share all good things with your instructor. I told you I don't I believe in giving by obligation. In other words, I believe if you receive, you give. And I believe because you're receiving from this ministry, you, you know, realize the, that that we've put uh, these free videos on YouTube for years, and I'm just you know, and this video, I'm listen, we get all around the world these messages blessing people all around the world everybody i mean I, I can't tell you how many calls and emails we get uh talking about how god is transforming people's lives bringing deliverance and healing and restoration and many people are saying they don't even have a word like that in their city and 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 so um and which is something else that we're gearing up for to, to do some church planning but anyway um but uh if you are receiving from this ministry the bible instructs you to share uh, or so back into what is feeding you. So if I'm feeding you as a pastor, as a man of God, I don't care if you got a church or a pastor, uh, but if you're coming to, to and receiving from our channel and receiving from these videos, which are being provided to you for free, then you are obligated to sow back and share back with this ministry because you are being fed. That's the biblical principle. That's the principle of Galatians 6 and 6. Galatians 6 and 7 goes on to say, uh, don't be deceived, God is not mocked. It's talking about sowing into a man of God. We use that scripture wrong. When, whatever you sow into a man of God, that and that only shall you also reap. If you sow sparingly into who's feeding you, then you're gonna reap sparingly. But when you are liberal to those who are sowing the spiritual food into you, then, uh, then, then you will reap a liberal. And so uh, it's very important how you take care of an anointing, how you support the anointing and anointing that's, that's sown into your life. Don't leave. And I'm not just talking about me. Don't ever take men of God for granted. Somebody who is anointed sowing that word into your life. Don't ever uh, uh, mistreat that or, or take or be common with that or feel that you don't have a part to play in their support. Because the Bible says if I if, if, if I sow into you my carnal, what is it that I reap your if I sow into you my spiritual what is it that I reap your carnal? In other words, we're supposed to have a reciprocating relationship. If you come to YouTube and you receiving from those videos, then the Bible obligates you to begin to sow to so back to sustain my life. If the spiritual word of God is sustaining your life, then the Bible says you must share all good things with me, meaning your natural things should sustain my life. That's how you build a relationship. Uh, with a man of God and that's how the anointing flows into your life so that's why it's so important for you to uh, to understand obligation giving you know I don't like all of the gimmicks and tricks and playing the games I believe that if you've receiving the word if, if yokes are being destroyed if God is remove, removing your burdens and, and, and your life is getting better then that means you're receiving the word the anointed word is breaking the yokes and uh, you have an obligation at that point There has been an acceleration, I don't want to say acceleration, an increase, an increase of warfare. If you have any spiritual discernment or senses, you will sense that there's been a, it's an increase. Uh, there are, there is a process to falling. Amen. And I want you to understand that, that nobody falls overnight but this is a season where people are falling away they're falling away because they have underestimated the relentlessness of their enemy that's why you don't have time to be distracted in this season stay focused that's why if you're not if you're not believing God for anything you have nothing to focus on focus is finding a spot on the wall and not moving your eye from it. That's focus. But if you're not believing for anything, you have nothing to focus on. Without, without focusing on a, on a goal, on something that you believe in God for, then you won't discipline yourself to walk in faith. Focus brings discipline. Discipline brings faith. That's why you have to keep your belief out there so you have something to focus on amen 
uh, part of the reason that people quit. They'll quit school, they'll quit a lot of things because the, the, one of the number one reasons is they have no focus. They've changed majors two, three times, but they have no focus. When, 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 when you want to complete something, you focus on it, and you don't change gears or change direction because you understand that every time you change direction, it takes you longer to get to the goal. So there's a, there's a, uh, the warfare right now, I'm sensing it, it's a, uh, I don't know what else to call it, but a quitting spirit, a giving up, a giving up. And I want to speak to that today. I wasn't going to actually say, minister this today, but I feel, I felt like in the last uh, hour, a couple of hours, I felt like, no, I need to, I need to speak to this. Amen. Amen. This is a season where you have to, uh, you have to lay aside all the sins and the weights, things that are unprofitable, people that are unprofitable. Um, you have to understand how much uh, chatting and social media, uh, which is just a distraction, how distracted will you be? Because you have to have a laser focus in order to, comp in order to overcome the warfare of this season. Satan's job in this season is to put out fire. You can see it. If you, even some of your brothers and sisters, you look at them, you'll see it. Their fire is gone. And it's because they, they, they lost their focus. They didn't know that Satan will either pull you under or push you over. If he can't stop you by taking away, he'll bless you. He'll push you over. Either way, whether you go under or over, he got you off the course. I tell people all the time, everything is not a blessing. When Satan, Satan tries us first with poverty, poverty will usually easily beset us, make us lose our focus. Once we overcome and become faithful, and he knows he can no longer use poverty, he'll open the door that seems like a blessing. And he'll bless you out of the will of God. Y'all didn't hear what I said. That job will seem like a blessing, but that job will take you away from the will of God. This is a season where you have to have keen discernment where you understand what is God and what is not. Because there's a falling away. There are people that God is trying to separate. You know people God's trying to separate them from. But because they don't understand that, they're allowing that to be a distraction that is actually taking them away. That's why I try to tell people, don't counsel with me. It's not good to counsel with me because I'm compelled to say what I believe. And I've had the, uh, I've had the inclination, that's not a good word, not inclination, determination that I don't go back on what I said originally. I learned that. Once I believe I heard God, I don't I ask my wife, I won't change what I say. So if you come to me and you say, this is, I believe this is the will of God, and if you want my opinion and I say, I don't believe that's the will of God, no matter what you say after that, it's going to make me change back. I'm not going to change because I believe that God will get me. So make sure this is the one you're supposed to marry. Because if you come to me and you ask me, you invite me to expound upon if I don't agree, I'm probably not going to ever agree. Especially if you can't take weight or no, then we're going to fall out. I'm saying that because, now I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it real, that's why I, I, I want to say this tonight. I'm saying that because you, 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 you'll see many people in this season, they join this ministry. Y'all see they join then they start falling away. They start falling away because you have to understand that Christianity is warfare. You fight daily. And depending upon how much you believe in God for, that determines the degree of the fight or the degree of the fire. If you don't want nothing, won't be much fight. But when you really believe in God, amen. So you have to understand that 
my job is to feed those that have found him. It's not to make you want him. The word works for those that found him. See, people sit there and backslide and be mad like, where am I? Where am I? No, my job was to feed you because you want him. I'm not motivating you. I'm not motivating. I can't make you desire to be with him. I'm feeding you because you already got him and I'm enhancing your experience. I can't make you want him. So you must say, Lord, increase my hunger, increase my desire. Amen. Now, all right, thank you, son. Give them all my hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What was the title? No time to fall. Come on, say, I ain't got no time to fall. Now listen, you know, you can love everybody. You know, I love everybody. I love my mother, my brothers, my sisters, but that's, they fall, it's on them. I love my children. They grown now. They fall, it's on them. I have to believe that what I sowed into you that the Lord will work on them seeds till he, till he beats you down enough that you yield to him. But I'm not going to lose my peace because you decide to act a fool. Bible says you may go your own way, but you won't depart for long. My job is to make sure I sold the right thing. So this is a season where you have to make sure that you are standing strong with the Lord. Amen. All right. Look at Matthew 13. Amen. I have a, um, I've been noticing because serving the Lord is not automatic. It's not automatic. There is a, there is, there is things that you must do to build a relationship. You have to build it. It takes time. Um, you cannot, it's not a magical overnight thing. You have to build, say build. build. Now the falling, the falling away is, I've been noticing, not, 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 not just, it's a spirit now that's on the church. It's not just, not just this church, it's on the body of Christ. Uh, it's, it didn't just start, but I'm noticing it real strong now. Amen. And I'm noticing it because uh, people don't seem to understand that you can't play with Satan. You can't play with him in this season. I tell people that you need to seek to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need his spirit in order to live this life. And what happens is people get comfortable in church. They get comfortable riding on the residue of my anointing or other people's anointing or their prayer partner's anointing and they do not build a fort for their own fortification. They don't build anything for themselves. They do not uh, practice with their sword. They don't know how to use the shield. They're walking around barefooted. They have no helmet. And so because they didn't, uh, they didn't do what it took to become a soldier, understanding that you get a grace period when you start following the Lord, but then there comes a time where the, inner, where, where the Lord removes what he's holding back and allows it to come because only this fight is going to mature you to go to that next place. But during that time, you was playing around or not serious or not really using your faith, and so your weapons are on the ground and your faith is small. And a lot of times when, what it, when, 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 when you are in your ordained trial, hear what I just said, meaning a trial that Christ ordained for you, you're unprepared. And just because you're unprepared doesn't mean he does not allow the trial because the trial is going to crush you to a place where you will never be unprepared again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this is a season where you must understand that anybody can fall. This is one thing I've learned about walking as a Christian. You can fall from any level. No matter how high you go, you can fall from any level. You could serve him for 30 years and fall. Anybody. Anybody. Nobody is, is 
nobody is immune from falling. The only thing that you learn, the, the, I, the thing I can say that you, that you learn by walking with him for lengths of time is you develop godly habits. And your godly habits keep you out of certain sin. But that's based upon everyday living. That means just walking this walk. But there comes a time where, you are, where there is an ordained trial. There is an ordained test that your uh, godly habits won't be enough. Y'all, because there will be demons involved in attacking and tempting and pulling, trying to get you out of the place because Satan knows that the place that God has is as powerful as the blessing itself. Let me say that again. The place of blessing is as powerful as the blessing itself. The place of blessing may be more powerful because the place of blessing, you can keep getting blessed. So Satan knows I cannot stop the blessing unless I get them, move them out of the place. This is why James says an unstable man is unstable in all his ways. That man will not receive anything from God. So what happens is uh, uh, Satan will keep a person from being stable. You sisters, that's the first thing you look for in a man. We get a lot of marriages here and people get married, but the first thing you look for is stability. Stability is everything. If a person is not stable, they can't be blessed. Why? Because God sends blessings to the place you should be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because you ain't home don't mean the mail stop. The mail going to go to the mailbox just because you didn't get it. You ever move somewhere and you still getting other people's mail coming to your house and you wondering? They changed addresses but didn't tell the sender. The mail's going to come to where the mail's designated. This is why you have to, this is why you have to be uh, 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 under a man of God that is your covering. In other words, the man of God that has the keys or a key to the, key, to the, to the kingdom of God so that Christ knows this pastor has taken oversight over this person so it's safe to send their mail there. Some of y'all don't know the importance of a pastor. You think it's just about preaching and teaching, but it's more than that. Some of you all know for years, I don't do it as much as I used to uh, because I'm, I, we have more people and I'm, I'm, I got other things going on. But, uh, and a lot of times I'm mindful of people watching. But a lot of times, y'all, some of y'all remember years ago before we was live streaming, I would just be talking and I'd just say this, you. And boom, 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 boom. Because that's your meal. Amen. And so, like when people like like when people don't come to church, just because they didn't come don't mean they mail ain't gonna show up. I'll say it right out of my mouth, and they wasn't there. They missed what they missed the meal. I told you, God is God of timing. Your life is a blueprint. He does not deviate from the blueprint. Amen. This is the reason why he says, I will not go back and give you nothing. I'm going to have to redeem the time. Yes, I'll have to accelerate you. Amen. I'm not going to go back, but I'll accelerate you to redeem the time. Amen. Why? Because you behind. It's, I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to bring your blessing back to where you are because your, your blessings are on the blueprint. At 30, you're supposed to be here. At God is, God is not, God is not in time, but he controls it. And the reason why he won't go back, because he said, I take no pleasure in those that draw back. So, he, so you, what you have to do is he'll get you in a place of brokenness that he'll, you will allow him, which is yielding. Yielding is, yielding is letting the wind push you. 
That's what acceleration is. The reason to catch you up, he got to break you so you will stop resisting. So then his spirit can, or wind can blow you to, the, to, to catch you up. Redeem the time. It's called acceleration. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, I'd rather walk in God's step than have to catch up. Did y'all? There are people right now that they're saving their life and they're getting behind. See, when God, see, listen, listen, when God tells you to let something go and you don't let it go, you are going to fall behind everything in your life. As a matter of fact, you'll end up in poverty. You will end up in lack because by you not obeying the most high, you stagnate yourself. So because you are stagnated, all your blessings are still coming on time. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? This is why you never get anxious or you never get worried when you are in God's step. When you are stepping in time with God, you don't get worried because you know what he has for me is for me. I'll walk into it. What you get worried about is when he's convicted you about something he told you to let go of. Because whatever you don't release becomes an anchor. And some people are, are sent into your life to anchor you. To keep you out of God time. And you know when it's when you know when you're out of God time because it'll be struggle, chaos to keep it. So the most high in his infinite wisdom will speak out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Who am I talking to? My God. He'll speak out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, meaning. He'll tell you two or three times, at least three, especially when you're hard-headed, he'll use three. Amen. When you're spiritual, he'll use two, but when you're hard-headed, he'll use three. Amen. Because he doesn't want you to fall, fall behind. Are y'all there? Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Come on, say the place is as important as the blessing. Go over here. I'm, I'm, I know I'm in Matthew. Go over here to Joel. Joel chapter 1. Hallelujah. Are y'all there? Amen. This is why the Bible says, listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice is playing catch up. Obedience is better. Meaning moving when he moves, moving when he say, being, being, being current with God. Are y'all there? Amen. See, this is what's happening in this hour. I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell y'all. What's happening in this hour is the most high, he desired a sacrifice in the last season. His sacrifices are not easily given. What he asks for when he's ready to take you to your blessed place, call it, the Bible calls it your wealthy place. When he's about, your wealthy place is a place of continual blessing. It's the place when the Bible says in Malachi that he'll open the windows of heaven and pull you out a a let that one blessing will bless the rest of your life yeah. when he's trying to take you uh, yeah. when he's, he's trying to take oh I said something before that man I missed it what did I say before that obedience is better than sacrifice no it was better than that man it was a good point too That's all right. It'll, 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 it'll come back. His goal is to take you to, say, my wealthy place, the place of continual blessing. 
this is the reason why um, Satan will Satan will show up at that time. I said he'll tell you to give up. What did I say? No, no, the sacrifice. He'll ask for something. He'll ask for something, and the sacrifice will be difficult. It'll be difficult because um, um, it's a test. It's, it's, it's a setup of obedience. Just like before, when God was about ready to exalt Abraham, he said, give me your son. Give me Isaac, something that's going to be hard to sacrifice. But based upon Abraham's obedience, God said, that's all right, I got a ram, I got something else, but I'm going to honor you or reward you for your obedience. You was willing. It's very important to just to obey. Say obey. obey. Now, um, look at Joel 1, chapter 1. Y'all there? It says, hear ye this, verse 2, verse 2. Hear ye this, ye old men, and give ear. All ye inhabitants of the land, had this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, tell ye your children of it, and let your children, say tell your children. Tell your children. And let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. This is how you train your children. What are we training our children? No, I'm, no. If you look at the look, look at look at the scripture, verse four. Tell them that which the palmer worm had left, had the locust eaten. That which the locust had left, had the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm had left, had the caterpillar eaten. It's very important that you teach your children what's going to devour. Amen. Teach them about the devourer. That's a bad, I, I feel that. That's a better word. That's the spirit that's going. That's what it is. It's the devourer. Teach your children about the devourers of blessing. Say devourers. I'm going to give you a few, but I'm going to give you one. Number one, a devourer of blessing. Call it a canker worm, a palmer worm, but it will eat the blessing. Disobedience. Amen. Not just disobedience with God disobeying you Amen. the Bible says honor thy father and thy mother Amen. that your days will be long honor thy father and mother that thy days be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth you say disobedience, disobedience. are y'all there Amen. number two stubbornness stubbornness the Bible says stubbornness is as the sin of witchcraft Rebellion and stubbornness. Wait a minute. What's stubbornness? Stubbornness is rebellion. Say rebellion. So we'll change it from stubbornness to rebellion. Say disobedience. Disobedience means to do something. You told me to do something and I didn't do it. Rebellion means I've set myself against you. I set myself against you. Say amen. amen. These are devourers. Say devourers. devourers. Meaning they will eat up anything I can leave you. Amen. Anything I give you. If I give you an inheritance, it'll eat it up. Amen. You don't believe me. I'll go to the next one. Another devourer. Laziness. Yes. Laziness. These are things that will devour. Y'all there? Amen. The Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little fold in other hands. And poverty comes upon him like a robber. Teach your children to be diligent. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Let's go one more place. Can we go one more place? Go over here. <laughs> Joel 1, 
Joel chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse, let's see. Go to verse uh, 20, 25. You there? And I will restore to you. Now, now, say the devourer. The devourer. I showed you what the devourer was. Amen. There's many devourers. Don't get me wrong, but I'll give you three that you teach. Joel said, teach your children. Amen. Teach them about these things. going to eat up. Did you know most of these things, most of those three things, what are they? Disobedience. Rebellion. Did you know those three things will come to your children through people? It'll be people. Evil communication corrupts good manners, meaning whatever's in that person transfers to yours. This is why they must walk in obedience because many times they will like the person, they'll be okay with the person, but the devourer, a parent will see the devourer. And a parent will begin to tell you there's a devourer there, but if you don't have obedience, you will rebel, set yourself against them. And when you do that, nothing is left because the Bible says because you did not honor your mother or father, you shortening your days. Amen. Did y'all? Come on, I'm talking now. Amen. See, people get upset and offended because they, 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 they want to talk with me and they want to counsel me. I've had people recently, lately, uh, people want to counsel and talk with me and they think because they manipulate everybody else that they're going to manipulate me. And I'll sit there until I see the Holy Ghost. I won't say nothing until I see the devil or the Holy Ghost. I got to see one of them. If I see the devil, I know what to do. If I see the Holy Ghost, I know what to do. I'll wait. I'll let them talk till I see the devil or the Holy Ghost. And you don't understand. That's why I tell people you really don't want to counsel with me because I'm not manipulatable. <laughs> It'd be best for you to get the word from me right here. Get it across the pulpit. Because it's one thing when you counsel with me and I say, no, I'm talking to you about you right here. You need to stop doing it. Then we'll see if I'm your pastor or if I was Miss Cleo. Am I your pastor or was I just your friend? Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, a lot of people that tried to counsel with me, they wanted a friend. They did not understand I'm not your friend. If I don't tell you the truth, I got to give an account. So when I'm sitting there and you sitting next to a wolf and, and, and even and, and I see the devil, I got to tell you this is a wolf or a witch. I'm going to have to tell you. Now, I'm the same one that had you at the altar weeping. I'm the same one where the anointing hit you in the chill bumps. I'm the same one. But because you dare to take our relationship to the next level. Amen. So don't come to me unless you really are a lover of the truth. Amen. We didn't distort this. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. What'd I say? Joel 2. Now remember I said, say the devourer. I told you it's easier to, it's easier to walk in God's step. Meaning step, stay with God. Because as long as I. Now how do I stay with God? I, I let nothing. I, I let nothing tie my heart. I let nothing tie my heart down. Like. There's, there's, there's a lot of things. But I'll give you three. Bitterness. Resentment. Unforgiveness. Those are three things that will tie your heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When our heart is tied. We no longer are progressive. We, as a matter of fact, we have stumbled at that point. Let's go one more. I'll give you four. Bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, offense. Being offended. The word offense means scandalon. Offense is the part of the trap that snaps. Talk to me. Meaning getting, you get caught in offense. Satan will use offense, especially against somebody that's ordained to speak into your life. 
That's why you're always offended at your parents, because they ordained to speak into your life. He'll use offense, especially with your pastor. You'll battle being offended all the time. Because he's trying to, he understands, once I get you offended, you will be cut off from receiving. And because I send your mail there, and you cut off from receiving, yet that's where I'm sending your mail. Then you receive to get downloads from heaven in that place. That being the place. That's your spiritual address. So you have, that's why you have to guard your heart. And be careful because in this season, I'm telling you what I know. Listen, I'm not just talking. I'm giving warnings and everything. I'm telling you. Satan is working at the hearts of people to cause them to become offended because the devourer is trying to rob them and get them from the place. Say the place. The place is, is as important as the blessing. I can't stress it enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where you go to church will determine whether you make it or not. Amen. It's that vital. It's that vital. I wish I could say you can go anywhere. You cannot. Where you go to church determines whether you make it. Are you there? There has to be an ingredient in that church that's a part of your destiny. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little, just, maybe I'm too deep for y'all. Are you there? So, that's why I'm telling you, you don't have no time to fall. Um, before I read it, let me go further. This is, this, the greatest trap that I've ever seen, or trick of the enemy, the greatest trick I've ever seen is to cause people to become offended. That's why Jesus said offenses will come. They coming. Everybody will have an opportunity to be offended. Now woe unto the one through, through who the offense comes through. But offenses will come, meaning he was telling his disciples, there's no way to escape being offended. The thing you must do is mature. The Bible says, uh, learn to rule your spirit. The Bible says, he who has no rule over his own spirit it's like a city broken down without walls. Meaning, discipleship is spirit rule training. Teaching you how to rule your spirit so that you don't, stuff don't move you like an immature person. Meaning that people used to be, couldn't look at you wrong without you falling out. But as you get spiritually strong, you begin to be able to overcome the pettiness and grow. And, and once you do that, you start developing fruit. Say fruit. Fruit, developing fruit is the end result, not the end result, but it's the process of discipleship. Because the goal of discipleship is to be built up so others can come and pick from your tree. So what Satan does, listen to me, listen to me. What Satan does is he causes us to become offended. Offense means stumble. Stumble means to fall down. That's what it means. Fall down and be trapped. Are you there? It's like a prison. And so what, and, and listen, these things, listen, these things come through people. That's why you need to guard your heart in certain seasons from listening to people talking about everybody and everything and Guard your heart. They're saying that because they're offended. And offense likes to share. So you have to be careful. Because, and you, and, and, and it's very important to, 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 why are you saying that? And why are you telling me? See, you can't love people so much that you partake of their dainty morsels. You can't love them so much that you'll eat the brownie. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be mature enough to say no, sir. No, I don't. No, that's all right. I don't want that. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, talk to me. Because the goal say devour. The devourer is trying to rob me. Say to move me from the place of blessing. That's why I'm telling folks, if you come here and you join this ministry, this is a warring church. This is a warring church. You don't see me like these sponge, sponge bar pastors. You know who they are. The SpongeBob pastor, when the service is over, he's down here in the aisle. Oh, baby. Oh, Lord. Oh, honey, how you doing? And, uh, just touching on you, loving on you, hugging on you. He's at the door, kissing you on the way out. Now, no. No, I don't do that. You don't show up to church. He's, where that? What's that? No, I don't do that. You don't do that with soldiers. Are y'all there? Amen. And so me and my wife, we, 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 we actually demand you grow. Amen. That's why she's not like it. She's not like it. All loving on you, hugging you all the time, hugging you till you cry. And we don't know. No, stop crying. No, stop. No. So that's what some of y'all want. Y'all hooked on that stuff. Worry about this little hug you till you cry. You think crying is, no, that ain't growth. It's okay to cry. We don't have no problem with it, but don't think that that's, you know, that's, that's nurturing. There's a point where you don't need nurturing. You need fathering. You don't need nurturing. You need discipline. Nurturing is going to always tell you, oh, baby, you hit your knee. Oh, come here. See, that's nurturing. No, you don't need that. You need, get up. Get up. What do you mean you ran quick? Your kids need you. Get up. So there's no way to grow without discipline. Come on, say discipline. Now, let me read this. Are y'all there? Look at uh, Joel chapter 2. Look at verse uh, 25. Now, I, told, I showed you on Joel 1 about what you have to warn your children, and I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Because the, I'm telling you the divide was coming. Or he's, in, or he, or he's trying to get in your life. And now I'm showing you, um, I'm showing you what happens after the devourer gets you. This is why we talk to our children so, why we're so, y'all children, y'all kids need to realize why our parents are so dogmatic and we're so silly and you think we just, just always saying that. That's because we understand that it's easier to prevent it's easier to prevent than restore. Restoration is harder than prevent. I'd rather prevent it. You don't believe me. It's easier to keep you from getting on heroin than for you to get on heroin and get you off. Preventative is always easier than having to restore something. Are y'all there? Verse 25, and I will restore to you the years. Look at what happened when they get a hold of you. These locusts, these canker worms, these devourers. When they get a hold of you, years. They took years out of your life. That's the design of Satan. To, he wasted the years. You should have been moving in the things of God. Remember, you in God's step, moving with God, walking right into the ordained blessings that's part of the blueprint called destiny. There's a blueprint. I don't want to get too deep into that. But he takes years. Why years? Because what's the whole goal of the enemy? Waste your time. Once you, listen, once you, he wastes your time, you start living a life of regret. It's impossible to achieve in regret. Because regret does one thing. That, call, that, that will always keep you from going forward. Regret always keeps you looking back. If I wouldn't have did. If they wouldn't have did. If, that's regret. So a, a, a good spiritual father is trying to motivate you that you don't allow the devourer in your life whereby it, he wastes years of your life. And by the time you do get your mind back right, you got so many 
dysfunctions and bad habits that is so that it takes the Lord years to clean you up enough or to cause you to function. Are y'all not hearing what I'm saying? This is why we preach on Delilah's and fornication and this is why we preach on Cain and we this is why we preach this stuff because I don't want to now, now see because listen I'm going to show y'all for all y'all that don't understand when the prodigal son's father when, he, when the prodigal son went to his father and he said give me what belonged to me and left notice the posture of the father the Bible said he stood on the porch gone so don't be looking for me gone because I understand that you are the devourer is going to teach you the devourer is going to teach you what happened he, he got in want what's want devourer his stuff got devoured then, then he began to be in want. Then what had to happen? He had to come to himself and do what? I go back. Where was the father? On the porch. Where was he at? On the porch in the place that you left. And when he went back to the place, he got a rain. When he went back, he had to go back to the place because the place is as important as the blessing. So the devourer is trying to get you out of the place. That's why I don't let them talk that sweet stuff to you right now. Not right now. You're trying to get me out of the place. You're trying to stir up passion before it's time. Oh, y'all want to read the Bible? Don't be stirring up no passion. The Bible says no man can take fire in his bosom and not be burned. So all that laying up, sleep with your head on the phone, all the, stop doing that. Breathing all in the phone and chatting all night. Stop. You're stirring up passion. Keep on Snapchatting and Instagramming me pictures. You don't need to be sending nobody no pictures while you in your bedroom and all in your pajamas. You're across the line. What you don't know, those pictures are on the internet now. That's part of your file, silly. Everything you say and do is recorded. There's going to come a day where all your stuff going to be put before you. Don't put nothing on her you won't tell your mama. No time to fall. This ain't the time to fall. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. I would go further than that, but I'm going to move on. Look at this. And I will restore to you the years. This is why I'm so dogmatic with my, I'm trying to get them to realize how many years it took me and my wife Amen. to get a normal mind. Amen. To have to be deprogrammed Amen. from years of sin Amen. and get a normal mind. And sometimes thinking, will I ever get back right? This is why we praise him the way we do. We're praising him based on, I didn't even think I could get back to this level. Didn't think I could be this free. This is why we give him glory. And we're showing our gratefulness and hoping that the children are looking so they realize how precious it is to be free so you won't go out and bind up your life. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? You have to understand, you have to always pray a prayer that God will keep what I commit unto him. Commit your body to him. He'll keep it if it's committed. But you can't run with fornicators. Whoremongers listening at their stories. You can't run with that and think you're going to keep yourself. Because these devourers always come through people. One of the greatest messages I preached was the devil sends people too. 
Christians do not know that. He sends people. He ain't going to physically show up. He sends people. Right when you're about ready to reach the hope, he'll send somebody. And that person will seem like the answer. And you, if you don't have enough discernment, he will make you switch your affection. Uh, y'all, I'm, let me move on. And I will restore unto you the years, say the years, I got to go, but I'm still there on that point, years. That's what it takes when the vow will get you. It takes years. And some of y'all, that's what's wrong with some of y'all, it's not some of y'all even sitting here, it's people that are not here right now that I'm thinking about right now that have an ad mentality that, why don't the Lord use me? Why ain't he using me? Years. Your mind is still, you need years. You need spiritual therapy. It takes years to be trusted. It takes years for the most high to trust you to speak to his people. Are y'all there? I see it. I hope you're watching. I had somebody come to me and they was coming to me and talking about getting married and they wanted to be married and they had been in so much stuff that they were literally scattered in the mind. Yes. Yes. Only one thing I've ever seen, two things scatter you. Two things I've seen that scatter your mind. Scattering of the mind means you got a lot of demons. Right. Right. Only two things do that. Drug and prostitution. Two things scatter the mind where your mind is truly scattered. And because uh, of the desire of what they wanted, they wanted me to overlook that. When I'm saying, do you know how much time it takes, first of all, to get the devil out? And then you live a, a you walk out healing. And we ain't going to get the devil out because you don't want the devil out. You just want what you want. So I had to lower the boom. And the boom was, I won't join this together. Go to the courthouse. I won't join. You ain't going to get my anointing on that. I have to give an account for that. So then they get offended because I won't whore myself. My pastoral authority ain't for whoring. So you have to say, uh, that's why I told, don't be talking to me. We don't mind telling you the truth. We'll tell you and we'll sleep all right. We've been doing this for a long time. Y'all don't know. We did. We've been, did y'all see, I'm going to tell y'all, I got to go. I'm going to tell y'all something about pastoring. Do y'all, listen, I, listen, when you pastor and you learn, you learn a lot of things. One thing you learn is it's, it's only about four personalities that you're going to deal with. Everybody falls in one of these personalities. That's why you will look at a person and be like, they like them. The same thing they did, they did. That's how you know how to deal with them. Because they did it and you're like, no, oh they, oh, they don't do the same thing. Then when I talk to you, I'll tell you, you know, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this. Then you sit there looking at me mad because I know. <laughs> then you try to change that because I said it, but you can't change your nature because you don't know how to do nothing but be a manipulator. Right. You don't have about four. The liar, the manipulator, the whoremonger, and the thief. That's about the four you have. That's about what you got. And you always know because they all come the same way. And me and my wife, if you ever see me and my wife just look at each other, that's because we, 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 I'm saying to her, do you see it? Yeah, I see it, baby. And I say, baby, I'll, and I, I'll look at her and say, we'll know what we saying. Like, oh, they think we fools. They don't think we see them. The Bible says, provide all things honest in the sight of all men. Amen. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Live a transparent life where people ain't always got to figure out what you mean and discern your motive. Be true. Be pure. Because when you come with these angles, get delivered from witchcraft. Get delivered from manipulation. 
That's what was wrong with this person, bro. They thought they could manipulate me because they manipulate tricks. They don't know I, I come from the hood. I come from the, this, this is the difficulty about dealing with me. It's very difficult. I'm spiritual, uh, intellectual, and I'm ghetto. <laughs> How you gonna get around this? Which way you gonna come? Cause I'm, this is, I'm, I'm all, I'm, Now I don't live ghetto, but I understand ghetto. I can talk ghetto, I can get ghetto quick. You never lose get being ghetto. Black people will never lose being ghetto. I'm in Africa, they get ghetto too, everybody's ghetto. Everybody. We, it's part of our characteristics, you don't believe me? They, the voice go high, and you get the, get the buck in your eye, you just, everybody can get ghetto. You don't lose that. What I mean by that is understanding game. Understand all them games. So people talk to you as if you, as if you stupid, like you don't know that you lying. Well, see, I just need a little money because I if something happened. They ain't even looking at me. That's how manipulative they are. They can't even notice my face that I'm looking at you like. See, learn to be true. Say, be true. The Bible says the Lord's way is straight. If the Lord's way is straight, Satan's way is crooked. Crooked is angles. Crooked people always come at an angle. You have to figure out what they're talking about. Because they never provide all things honest. In other words, an honest person puts it on the table. This is what I'm saying. This is what I mean. Ain't no deeper meaning. But a crooked person comes this way. They'll talk in a way where when you catch them, they'll pull back. Well, that ain't what I meant. They're they not true. Learn how to be true. Stop trying to win and convince people. Talk to people and let them decide how they feel about it. Don't try to make them think what you want them to think. It's manipulation. See, when you're not, when you when you allow people to respond the way they need to respond, Amen. then you don't have a need to manipulate them. Amen. You can handle the outcome. Amen. But when you are a rejected person that can't accept no, you will always try to tell it in a way. Have you ever had your child come to you and they tell them the story and you're looking at them like, they done left out all this. Because they're trying to manipulate. That's why I never let nobody tell you, well, I'm going to tell you, but you sure you ain't going to get mad? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I can't promise you nothing. Let me feel how I feel. See, when you're a manipulator, you always are trying to out, you, you're trying to think, outthink them. Like, you ain't got to poke at me. You ain't, don't be playing poker with me, trying to figure out my mind. Just, just put it on the table and let me feel how I want to. Let me say how, let me, whatever I say, let me be me. I'm trying to help y'all. People that manipulate, they will not come straight. They always come and you, and you are always trying to figure out what, what you mean? What, what? What are you saying? That's why I just be like, up, oh, bro, what you saying? What are you saying? They'll be talking between the lines. Well, see, they say, who's they? Right. Right. They're always talking to these, these nebulous people. Now, who are you talking about? Right. Learn to be straight. Amen. Say amen. amen. Talk to people straight because once I see you a manipulator, then I already know I can't trust you. Amen. Don't mean I don't love you. I'm going to still pass you and pray that you come out of it. But I know how far I can go with you. Amen. Say amen. amen. Let me get on. Y'all there? Amen. I'm almost done. Look at this. Um, what I say? I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm. My great army, the Lord's army, that I sent among you. Are you there? Remember I said it's a time for an ordained trial? Yeah. All right, now, now go over here real quick. I'm going back. 
Going back to Matthew 13, and I'm done. Y'all getting anything? His way is straight. If you hear nothing else I said, his way is straight. Anybody of the Lord will always be straight. I, 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 listen, I, I have, I have, uh, I have, I have, I've learned godly principles. These are little godly nuggets. Anybody that's real will always come straight. They'll always be straight with you. They'll always, you will never think that, that, that they're saying something they're not saying. They won't talk between the lines. They'll be straight. A, a person with a manipulative spirit will always come crooked and angles. And you'll have to chase them. You ever had to chase somebody in a conversation? You got to just chase them. You got to cut that off. Oh, don't go there. You got to cut that off. Because they'll run all the way around trying to get away from, because they don't like accountability. Say amen. amen. You sisters need to learn that because this is what game is. When brothers are talking, you shooting game, that's what game is. Game, game is talking vague enough that you draw your conclusion of what he's saying. Instead of him telling you what he's saying, he's saying just enough for you to draw a conclusion. He'll say stuff like, you know, um, I could see being with you for a long time. Now, now, the way the woman mind work, she done seen marriage. That ain't what he said. That's not what he said. Listen to what people say. Because when the long time is up, he going to say, I said a long time. Then you three years later, well, you just, we, why don't we get married? You just, I didn't tell you I was going to marry you. But he put enough out there to where you drew the conclusion. Never draw a conclusion what, when somebody didn't say that. Use what I, listen, use this word, clarify. What does that mean? Don't be afraid to add, what does that mean? What is a long time? As a matter of fact, that's, that's too, that's, that's, that's that ain't even in my vocabulary. What do you mean a long time? What, are you going to rent me? What the are you doing? Are y'all there? Listen, the greatest manipulators, listen, I'm telling you, they will always, they will always get you to draw a conclusion about what they said. They didn't say that. Because later on, they're going to tell you. You ever had somebody that they came around you and they was dropping hints, man, I'm really, I'm really, man, it's so hard. I really ain't got enough, barely got enough, give me some gadgets. And then you give them some money. And then you come back later on and be like, well, you know, you got that $10. I ain't asked you for that. And they right, they didn't ask you. They manipulated you. See, when people talk like that, I say, well, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What, what's going make, make, don't be, don't be hinting up on me. What you gonna do, man? You, you, boy, you gonna be hurt, ain't you? you I'm, a, I'm a, cause you don't have to ask me. You have not, cause you ask not. A manipulator won't ask. They'll, they, they will drop signs and hints to get you to offer, cause they never want you to. They never want to be accountable. You know, the worst feeling is for somebody to look you in your face and say, I ain't asked you for that, but you gave it to them. No, you're you going to have to ask me. Amen. Even as a pastor, people think because I'm a pastor that I'm just going to do stuff. They be coming around, hinting around. Well, well you know, it's, I don't know what we're going to do. They start off with that. Now, for somebody come around you to say something like, I don't know what we're going to do. Making sure you hear that. Now, what do they want you to do? What's wrong? They want to drop that problem on you. You enter into that foolishness. So, so I say, well, I don't know what you're going to do either. What you going to do? Not sure what you're going to do. Because people, see, 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 people, and I'm going to tell you, especially black people, listen, black people pride themselves on basically gaming you for something. 
They'll go, they will leave you and go back to their friends and say, see, I told them that and I got it from them. They like that. They like that. They'd rather trick you out of it and they'll be happy that they tricked you. That's why them cats that be over there begging. You know, they come with that. No, nah, man. No. Nah. No. Nah. I don't be playing. I don't say I ain't got it. Nah. No. No. Get, what your job, dude? You're too old for this. Well, I'd say stuff like that. Now, sometimes, sometimes I feel led to give it to them. But some people I do, I mean, some people, that's why you let, some people I do feel led to give it to them. Then some people are like, no, no. Nigga, you was here last time. You went straight in there and got that bird. Straight, you didn't even try to hide, go around the corner. I gave you, you went straight in there and got a bird. You might as well just say, buy me a bird. So I say, no, no. I have no problem saying no. Have my suit on. They know I'm a preacher. Have, well, I had the suit on that day. They know I was preaching. No. You ain't going to use God with God bless you. Ain't, I'm blessed. They, 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 you know how they put that on you to try to convict, try to make you feel guilty. God, well, God bless you. I'm blessed. I ain't asking for nothing. I'm blessed. What you need to do is get you a job. You don't believe me. I'm, it's, next time you see the sign, I work for food, say, okay, I'm going to go buy you something to eat, and I got something for you to do. Watch this car. Amen. They won't do it because they, it's manipulated. They, you, they'll ride right around the corner and get in the car and go home. Yes. A lot of that's game. Yes. Listen, peop, real people who are not users, you really don't know that they're dealing with stuff. Because some people have a dignity where they're going to try to f work it out first. So people that's always putting it out there because so they manipulate us. Are y'all there? Don't be a user. Why am I going out there? I'm, I'm almost done, so y'all know it's going to get worried the last 10 minutes. I'm almost done. Don't be a user. Don't use people. See, that's that welfare mentality. That ghetto spirit where we use people. Have a, I, I know people have money in their pocket and still try to figure out how they can get something out of you. They're users. And they play on your Christianity. And just because you say it don't mean you got to be a fool. Y'all be up in here letting people buy them. Don't be letting the same people keep buying from you. You tell that sister, look, look, it's time for us to trade. Now, 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 give me some gas money. I need something to eat too. Because you would teach people, you would teach people wrong. Jesus didn't keep giving fish. He said, I'll teach you to fish. People are users. And they think the church is a sucker and they'll come with that user spirit. And then when you tell them to give or tithe, tithing ain't in the Bible. Tithing is, is food. <laughs> My brother told me that tithing is food. He thought he had a good word. He thought he came back. He thought that was a good comeback. Till I said, well, when you get your EBT, bring us a bag of groceries. Says, yeah, we cook her. We can, we can use that. Since tithing is food. We'll take it. We'll take that. Bring some canned goods. Put them right up here where everybody can see them too. We ain't, ain't nobody shame. Ain't nobody shame. Put them right up here on the, on the altar and we'll take them. As we eating it, we'll say, bruh, so-and-so de de dedicate. We'll dedicate this meal to bruh, so-and-so. He thought I was going to let him off the hook. Because he said food. Okay, we'll take the food. We'll take it. All right, let me go. 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 Next time people talk to y'all about that, because I'm telling you, they do that. Everybody, there's, there's people watching me not right now. They won't write me what, see, the Old Testament. That was Old Testament, and it was never about that. Never about that. I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem with whatever you say your tithing was. I don't care what you say it was. If it was dogs, I don't care what you say tithing was. It don't bother me at all. Because the whole point of tithing that you could never get around was that I may have meat in my house. That was the point of tithing. It wasn't what you gave, it's that I may have it in my house. That's the whole point of tithing. The whole point of tithing is that when people come to the house of God and there's a need, that the house can meet the need because the Levites did not have an inheritance. Their job was to take care of the temple. This is the reason why you bless men of God, because their job is to take care of the temple. Now men of God got to get out there, have businesses, and work because the people don't get the concept. 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? So I don't get involved in all of that. But them same people be the main one needing help because they have a spirit of poverty on them. Why? Because they are slack in their giving. Are y'all there? The Bible says if a man sows sparingly, he going to reap sparingly. God loves a liberal, cheerful giver, a free-hearted person. Say amen. And the way you stay blessed, I told my wife this, I said, I said, I know we don't have to cook. I ain't a lot of things I don't have to do. I said, I do it because I understand where blessing come from. I understand where ble blessing come from serving, meeting needs. Say amen. And never go too high in anything that you can't get down. That's why Jesus washed feet. And I thought about that. I said, we're going to have to have one of them services. That's going to take grace. It's going to take grace. I'm, I'm telling you now, it's going to take grace. But we're going to do it. No, we're going to do it. That's good humility. But that's how you get blessed. Is that you become a giver. Say amen. amen. You find a way to bless people. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm a blesser. I just, it's just in my nature. I, lo I love to do it. I, lo I love doing it. Me and my wife right now, we got people fight over us when we come in restaurants. They remember the last tip I gave them. I, I, they remember that. They remember. Because I, I'm, I like to bless folk. So you give the Bible. As a matter of fact, we don't even have to talk about tithes. The Bible says give. Yeah. Giving it should be given. Just give. That's what it says. A stingy person going to always get a scripture. They're going to always come up with a scripture not to do something. But you give because it's right. Say amen. Let me go. Now, okay, I'm almost done. I'm done right here. Matthew 13, verse 3. And he spake these things unto, a par in a, unto, unto them in the parable, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And the seeds he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up, and some fell on stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Say, withered away. Withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground brought forth, and brought forth fruit. Some, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now the disciples didn't understand the parable. Amen. So he says, so, so Christ is going to break it down for him. Look at verse 11. And he answered them and said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. For whosoever hath, whosoever hath, whosoever has, whosoever got, whosoever got, whosoever got. Didn't it's not talking about people ain't got nothing. So, so, so it's a better investment to give to somebody who got something. See, that's backwards, but that's what the Bible is saying. Whosoever got to him shall be given. Oh, well, I know you give to somebody ain't got no, but that ain't what the Bible say. Amen. The Bible say the man that got going to get more. Amen. That's the principle. The man who, the, the principle is he got because he's disciplined. Amen. He got because he works principles. Amen. And because God trusts his principle. Amen. God is giving him because he's working God principle. Amen. That's why he's getting more. A person in poverty is why the Bible says you're going to have to pull with you always because a person in poverty will never work principle. He will work manipulation and begging, but he won't work principle. Are you there? And he says, for whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have what? More abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away. So poor folks get stuff taken away. Did y'all see that? Why are they poor? Because stuff gets taken away. Why? They won't work principle. So they sit on the porch jealous of ones that have abundance. Like you did something crooked to get abundance. Therefore speak to them in, therefore I speak to them in parables. I gotta go, I, I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't do that all this. Jump down, jump down, jump down, jump down, jump down, jump down. Uh, 18. Hear, hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. When anyone heard the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. This is the problem right here, why people are falling away. Say amen. People fall away, why? Because they hear the word, uh, they, they, they hear the word, but they don't understand it. Meaning they don't seek the Lord for understanding about what they heard. Amen. That's why what you should do is go home and get in the Bible and ask the Lord and pray, give me understanding about what I heard. Yes. Because when I get understanding, it becomes a part of me. 
But he that received seed into stony places, uh, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, meaning quickly he receives it, yet he had not root in himself. This is the majority of the people right here. But dureth for a while, but when tribulation or persecution come, because they ain't got no root, by, by and by, he is offended. See? He received the word, say amen, amen. but he don't have no root. Are y'all there? See, I, I, I really believe that's a choice of his own. He decided not to go deep enough. Amen. Meaning he came with a, he came not necessarily for the word. And so when he heard the word, he got very excited. But he had no intention of the root, of, 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 of really rooting in his heart. There's a lot of people do that. Amen. That's why I say you got to serve God for you. You can't serve God for your kids, your sisters, your brothers. They got to serve God for themselves. Amen. Say Amen. You, you might be joyful and happy and you might be growing in the Lord, but that's because you decided, I want it. I want, the root, I want the root to go deep. Amen. He also that receives seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the curse of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. See, that's somebody who heard the word, they received the word, but they got a good job. And the job took them away. Or they were chasing money. And it choked out the word. Say amen. amen. But he that received the seed into good ground is he that heard the word, understand it, and also birth fruit, and bring forth some hundredfold, thirtyfold, and sixtyfold. Stand on your feet. You have to decide what soil you're going to be. Are you going to be a hearer of the word, where the word and understand it, mm -hmm. and bring forth the fruit of the word, mm -hmm. or are you going to be the word that's sown among thorns, people in your life, choking out the word? You have to make a decision. That's why I'm telling this whole ministry at, in this season. You got to make a decision. You have to make a decision. You see how Sunday is, and then you see how Wednesday is. Amen. See, people did not make a decision to press. Amen. But Wednesday is, a, is, a, is an infusion. Amen. It infuses you. Amen. Helps you through the rest of your week. Amen. Especially when it's more of a Bible study Amen. than Sunday. Amen. So there was people who could have pressed, but they decided it wasn't important. So you have to decide, is this, is this life really important to you? That's why, I don't do, that's why I don't always give off the calls. I don't always do a lot of that stuff because I know if a person really is truly desiring the word or desiring God, they're going to adjust their life to be in the house of God whenever they can be. Amen. Say amen. amen. I was talking tonight. I said, I, I, I said it's funny how, brother, how you are calling to work. If you're five minutes late, but won't call in the church, don't care about when you get here to church. Don't care about whether your post is somebody's on your post or not. See, this is the stuff that shows concern, and we and you have to say choose. You have to choose what's important to you in this season. I don't know about you, but I've come too far to fall. I've come too far to fall away. Say amen. I lived this life too long. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I'm not going to even pray. I'm not going to even pray. You, you just have to make decisions. How bad do you want to serve God? I want him. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been here for 16 years. Because I want him. If y'all wasn't here, I was still serving. If I didn't have a church and I wasn't a pastor... I was still serving. This job is not glamorous. Trust me. I was still serving because I know him and I love him. My conversion and my experience with him has been so much that I can't go nowhere else. 
But I'm afraid some of you all are only excited about the word. But you have no root. And that's why when hardships come in your life, you don't run to the word and buckle down, but you run to people or you run to other things or you think about backsliding because you, cause you have not decided that for Christ I live and for Christ I die, Amen. this is my life. If it don't get no better, this is it. If you don't bless me no more, this is it. If I never get what I want, this is it. Because until you realize ain't nothing better, then you'll always be looking for something else. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your understanding. Cause us to grow in our understanding. Father, we thank you so much that you gave us a place that won't patty cake with us. But that will cut us and, 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 and deliver us and hit us and, do what, and, and, and deliver the word that challenges us to come up and to live the best life in you that we can. Father, cause us to reach our potential. Don't let me fall short of the call, of the high call. Whatever you got to do, do it. That I may be found a good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Get a loss in praise.